In an effort to curb the illegal sale of scheduled medication at spaza shops and other unlicensed venues, the Gauteng Department of Health has sought the help of the South African Health Products Regulatory Authority that will now be setting up a task team to deal with this issue. To discuss this, I am joined by Dr. Mvui Simzukwa. Uh, Dr. Mzukwa, good to have you on the program this afternoon, and thank you for joining us. Uh, can you share your thoughts firstly on the recent move by the Gauteng Department of Health uh, to really collaborate with SAPRA and tackle the illegal sale of medicine at spaza shops? Good day to you, Santa, and to your viewers and the whole team there. Um, thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, we acknowledge the step taken by the Gauteng Department of Health to engage SAPRA um, <clears throat> in addressing these illegal medicine sales. And, and we think this collaboration is, is quite crucial um, as it signifies commitment uh, to addressing this real and pressing issue that is really a, a, a threat to the public safety. And um, we, we, we think that um, it should have been, I, our belief is that it should have been a coordinated at the national level, because mm -hmm. you would understand that this does not affect only Gauteng. It also affects other provinces, where you find also that there are drug, uh, drug labs in, in case at, and in Tewin and many other areas. So we don't think it should be only um, a, a Gauteng issue. It should have been coordinated at the national level. You, you, you will have heard from the news, Kabeha uh, uh, as well, there are children that have been affected there. Yeah. So we believe that this should be coordinated nationally. It doesn't um, uh, uh, assist the nation to attend to these issues on a fragmented approach. Uh, we get more of your perspective on the proposal that you're making about uh, taking it national. But uh, before we get there, uh, let's speak about the key health risks associated with this uh, illegal sale of medicines at uh, unlicensed venues, uh, for instance, like uh, spaza shops. Uh, how does this impact both uh, individual health but also public safety? Well, you'll understand that um, especially, like we said, we acknowledge the role that SAPRA will be playing there because obviously they deal with uh, quality, you know, throughout the value chain. And in, that includes, you know, the, the retailers uh, out there that are selling, the selling these uh, uh, medicines. Uh, but the importance is this, you know, of, of this approach. If we have these puzzle shops selling uh, illicit uh, uh, drugs, um, one, the issue of safety, you know, as you may have picked up, you know, some children or even adults may die out of this. Mm. Uh, it may cause severe um, uh, illnesses, you know, and let alone the, the side effects, uh, allergies and everything that, that that may come up, you know, with this. Uh, but the problem is, you know, you continue to sabotage the economy, but also you're putting the lives of people at risk. Yeah. Um, you know, and it becomes a huge burden on the healthcare system because when this people complicate, they will come back to the healthcare system, which is really struggling at the moment. Dr. Mzugwa, I'm sure you'd agree with me that uh, this is not just an issue of uh, illegal sales, for instance. It's, it's also about a counterfeit, uh, expired, and uh, also improperly stored medicines. How serious is this problem, and what immediate steps are being taken to address it uh, from your standpoint? Well, like I said, you know, this is a serious issue um, affecting everyone. You know, um, it, it's, it's a health risk uh, to, you know, the whole public, but also it affects the, you know, the, 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 the health department or the health healthcare system. Um, it is important that when we address this matter, it must be a multidisciplinary approach. Mm. You know, like, like it is now, we hear that there's a, t a task team that is being formed by the Houghton Department of Health. And our approach is that let, us, let it not be a Houghton problem because this is a national problem. You know, the same approach should be expanded, you know, nationally so that it covers other provinces mm -hmm. as well. I mean, I, I can imagine, you know, um, you know, if this, these deaths of children uh, have affected uh, children of politicians, the outcry that would have been there, and uh, because these people are children are children of the poor, there is no, even the, the presidency, you know, just recently uttered the word, recently, after 12 deaths already. Mm. So we don't think that, you know, government is serious in terms of um, being proactive and protecting the children of South Africa. Because if you're killing the uh, children in South Africa, you're killing the future of this country and you are robbing us of talent, you know, that should be developing this country. So we believe that there should have been 
a proactive uh, a step first, not only waiting for people to die, mm. but also making sure that people don't get there. There should be enough inspectors out there, you know, to, to make sure that uh, communities are protected, especially now, but also there should be consequences when things like this, when people, when children of South, in South Africa are dying uh, because there's these uh, illegal operations out there. Uh, to piggyback on that sentiment, uh, the recent food contamination crisis, it has indeed put a spotlight on the health risks, especially in local shops. Uh, how does the situation tie into broader concerns about uh, public health safety uh, and regulation in South Africa? I think the issue of underfunding um, in terms of uh, these austerity measures that we've always been uh, uh, complaining about, it is affecting not only uh, the staffing of the inspectorate, it is affecting everyone, you know, you know, every corner, you know, that's supposed to be protecting the public. Now, if we have uh, the problem of, of understaffing, then it means we cannot employ, you know, the important people who should be preventing these causes. You know, for example, if you have inspectors, you know, they should have picked up all these things before people die. I think that the, the, the main aim of having a healthcare system and healthcare authority is for people to not get ill in the first place. So it's prevention. So that it should be followed by, you know, a, a proper inspection of, you know, a, a execution of the duties of SABRA and all these other stakeholders that are supposed to be protecting the public. So it is important that, you know, we don't wait and react to uh, the killing of children, but we should be proactive in protecting our children in South Africa. Uh, but what you are saying, uh, what is important now is that these illicit sales, they are not only... Uh, illegal, but they are also um, uh, putting at risk the livelihood of, 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 of South Africans, mm. but even including their lives in terms of, you know, uh, them getting exposed and, and getting ill and, and all these side effects. And, and like you said, some of these are expired. They are um, uh, stored in conditions that are not uh, appropriate for medicines. And they are sold out there by people who are not trained, you know, to be uh, selling out medicines. Uh, especially scheduled medicines. So this is cru crucial for us to say to the Department of Health and other authorities that please play your role because mm. people, children in South Africa are being killed under your nose and you're not doing anything about, it, about that. The authorities must take action from what I gather you to say right now. But Mr. Mzuga, from what, or Dr. Mzuga, from what you see, how is SAPRA working with the uh, other authorities such as local health departments and law enforcement uh, to effectively combat the illegal sale of these medicines? Uh, you must remember that uh, SAPRA is empowered by the uh, Medicines and Other Related Substances Act. You know, one, uh, to monitor, to evaluate, to inspect, you know, and, and, you know, and collaborate with other uh, government stakeholders in terms of following up throughout the value chain, you know, of quality of medicines and efficacy and all these things. So this is important um, uh, because if they work together with others, you know, they, 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 they play a, a, a vital role in terms of identifying this and also uh, making sure that there's a proper compliance, you know, in terms of uh, storage of these medicines, and but also the sale, the, the right people to be giving out or issuing out this message. So that collaborative effort is very important, you know, uh, uh, among all these uh, mm. players in the regulatory space. We're also getting worrying reports about uh, wholesalers potentially supplying medicines to uh, unlicensed retailers. Uh, what actions from what you see are being taken to investigate, but uh, also hold these uh, wholesalers accountable? Uh, it, this is very important. Um, we really, uh, on that on, on that uh, uh, note, we strongly urge the law enforcement uh, and other regulatory authorities to really take a swift action to protect South Africans. But also, we need stricter regulations, you know, on spaza shops and all these other retail, uh, retailers, you know. Um, but also focusing uh, on, on 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 quality, uh, packaging, the storage and the preparation standards of products. But, you know, we must hold accountable all those that are selling out these uh, 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 medicines, mm. you know, to people who are not authorized to do so. 
because it is illegal in South Africa. And I think law enforcement agencies should not shy away from uh, 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 even uh, uh, taking them to prison. We do understand that you are speaking to us by giving us a, a health perspective, but uh, speaking more generally, what are the challenges in enforcing these regulations around, especially the sale of medicines in informal markets? And how can these be overcome, Dr. Mzokwa? You know, the, the, the greatest challenge here is the austerity measures. Um, for example, you'll find that, you know, uh, um, entities in government may be willing to do their work in terms of the in, in inspections and all these things. But if they don't have enough resources, you know, uh, I, I don't honestly think that we can um, uh, be able to to cap this challenge. Mm -hmm. But what, what we, as the South African Medical Association, we are suggesting that, you know, there must be community education. Um, you know, there must be that expanded public awareness, you know, uh, uh, particularly in the higher areas, mm -hmm. you know, to guide communities you know, on how to source this, uh, um, uh, their medication safely. But also, uh, like we said, collaborative effort, you know, enhanced collaboration among health departments, uh, health departments uh, nationally, the regulators, the law enforcement agencies, mm -hmm. you know, um, and, and like we said, but also we encourage partnership to hold accountable those who violate uh, public health laws, ensuring the necessary action is taken. Mm. Uh, but, uh, you know, last but not least, it is important that we, 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 we remain, even those uh, 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 healthcare users, um, uh, advocacy groups like TAC, you know, to be taken in. You know, I, I, would, I would suppose that the team that they are forming now would include even TAC you know, to, to make sure that they partner with the right people so that they advocate for, for, for accountability. And as we wrap, uh, Dr. Mzukwa, uh, what is the South African Medical Association's role in supporting some of these investigations? And, and also, what message would you like to send to South Africans about the importance of sourcing medicines from licensed but also regulated establishments? You know, our role South African Medical Association it, uh, it, 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 you know, it's in that uh, um, uh, community education where we, we, we use it in the, in the um, uh, local uh, stations, uh, radio stations, you know, to talk about, you know, uh, some of these issues in the communities, especially, like I said, you know, in the, uh, in the high risk areas, we, because we want to guide these communities to, uh, like you said, source their medication safely, you know, uh, they must know where to get these medications. But they must know what level of medication you can get from a a, 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 a supermarket, for example, or even a, a spaza shop. Um, you know, so those are the issues. But the, what I would like to say to the communities is that if you uh, buy these medications, you know, that are, are from these um, uh, spaza shops and, and, and other uh, unsafe areas, you might put your, li your life and the life of your family at risk. You might even die from this. It's not like I'm threatening, but this is the truth. If you develop allergy, it might it, the hospital might might be too far for you to reach there. And and that's what we encourage that everyone must make sure that they get medicines from the right place. Yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Mzukwa, sharing your insights on this critical issue. Now, the work being done to address the illegal sale of medicines in spaza shops is also a step uh, towards safeguarding public health in.